Hey guys, Kurt Chan, Tactical Advantage at Autodesk, and today I want to talk to you about a couple of tips and tricks in regards to working with imported bodies as well as assembly joints. So let's go ahead and dive right in. As you can see, I'm working with an imported body from Chick Work Holding, and you can actually download one of their vices from their website. Let me go ahead and show you where you can get that at. Uh, when you do a Google search under Chick Work Holding and under Product Selector, you're going to drop down to one called One Lock Selector. Now from here you can actually download the user guide as well as the step file and then bring that into Fusion 360 since we work with so many different file types out there. Once you download it and you bring it in, it's going to come in looking exactly like this. Now the caveat is, the, the beautiful thing about this is that it's all perfectly placed, but the caveat now is that, well, there are no joints or mates, if you want to call them, associating any of these components together. So what this means is that if I go and just grab one of these faces and move it off, like everything can just move off from each other. What I want to show you is how do we add assembly joints and show the movement of the movable jaws. Because what you want to do is use something like this in your simulation for CAM and you can actually use this for the interference collision detection uh, or interference detection. If you want to know more about that and how to do that, take a look at Mike Aubrey's video on the upper right hand corner of your screen and he'll walk you through exactly how to set that up for uh, collision detection inside of CAM for simulation in that area. But in general now, I'm going to con command Z to go back to the original position is I want to now add the joints to show this moving all together. One key thing though is that when you actually import a body, what you'll notice is that the history, the, the, the timeline is not available when you work with the imported body. So what this means is that if I go ahead and just design or create, like a, let's just say if I create a sketch up here, what I would expect to pop up is like the little sketch icon on the timeline, but I don't have this. So as I start doing things, adding joints, none of this will be tracked. If you want all this to be tracked, let me show you, I'm going to cancel this out, let me show you how you activate the timeline uh, so you can capture all the history. So A, what you're going to do is at the very top, under the top level where it says the name of the file, right click, come down to say capture design history. This is how you turn this on when you bring in imported bodies. Very, very key. Now as you can see at the very bottom, I have my timeline. So anything that I do will be captured. What it's done is it just took all the components, threw them in as a uh, subset here, and now I can go through and now do what I want to do. So two is how everything just kind of moves off, right? Let's, let's talk about this. Well, I know that this whole bottom piece or the base is all going to be really grounded. So that's not going to move, right? Because that's going to be, you know, bolted to my machine table. As well as I have in this work holding the back side of the jaws, which we call fixed jaws. Those are not going to move as well. The only thing that's really going to be moving is this movable jaw right here. So this is key now. Let's talk about under joints. When you drop down under assembly, come down, you have joint as-built joints, joint origin, and then something called rigid group. I love rigid group because what this allows me to do is say, hey, you know what? Pick the components that you don't want to move and keep them all together. Not, not, not move, but have five components all move together. That's what it really means. So what I'm gonna do, let me just, and I can easily move components around on my tree if you don't notice that, just drag and drop ones before each other. But kind of the, the, the cool thing here though is if I select the components that I want to be, I guess, jumbled together, come up here under assembly, come down here to rigid group, what it's gonna do now, say all these components here, click okay that I selected, they're all gonna move together as, as one, kind of like a, like a sub assembly in that fashion. Really simple. Now, since these are moving as one, Technically, that should not move in general. So what I'm gonna do is just double click on one of the parts, right click and say, come down here to ground, ground this guy, making it fixed. So this guy will never move now. The other thing too is that these pieces should be together, right, for my fixed jaw. So what I can do is take that same approach, come down under assembly, come down to rigid group, make this part and this one a rigid group 
so now these two will move together, right? Then I can now just click one of these, the, one of the movable jaws, sorry, one of the fixed jaws that I want, right click and say ground, and now this is not gonna move or this is not gonna move. I only expect the movable one to move back and forth. So I can take the same approach again. These should be moving together. They're already in the correct placement of how they're, they, got, they came in oriented. So I'm just gonna come down to rigid group, select that one, select this one, say okay. And now these will now move together, right? So let's now jump in a little bit more into joints. And uh, one key thing is, positioning and having this centered right on the center of this base. Uh, a lot of people are familiar with in traditional other CAD packages really uh, something called the width mate. And uh, that incorporates, you know, selecting multiple faces and it centers it and you have to go through that multiple times. What we have is something called the, I like to work with it, it's called the joint origin. This is a great way to kind of set up everything and as you start going through and adding your joints, it's really easy to have things centered upon other parts. So parts centered upon other parts. Now, joint origin, what this does is this is telling me either for a type, I can say just pick a reference point and that's always gonna be shown. I can always use that to, to mate, to, to, to join together. Or I can come under between two faces, and what this does is take this face, it's going to rotate around, and now this face, and it's gonna say put a snap point between those two faces using any one of these references. So you're seeing that it's, there, it's applying the joint origin at the center between these two faces. This is great because now once I apply this, I can now just pick that center all the time and use it to reference off any other faces that need to go in the center of it or, or whatnot. So what I'm gonna do is in this arena, just come in and put it right here at the center of this movable jaw. From here, say okay. And now all I have to do is under assembly, drop back down to joint say for this first component, see how it's, it's keeping that joint origin that I'm gonna use as a reference? Just select it. Where does that need to go? Well, that's probably gonna go right here at that center of the base on this back edge. The beauty about joints is that it gives me all these joint points I can work with to, to, to mate it to. So if I click there, it's gonna move and place that back origin at that location, which is, which is really flexible and nice too. So what I can say now is let's just place this guy right here and it's gonna move it and place that movable jaw right there. You can see under the motion options that it's rigid. Now I don't want rigid because it needs to slide back and forth, right? So what I'm gonna do is drop down and go to slider and it's gonna show me exactly how it slides. It's moving in the X axis, which is not what I want. I want it to go probably down the, it's moving down the Z axis, which is not what I want. I want it to go down the X axis. If I pick X, it's now gonna move in the, in the correct direction that I want it to go. Of course, it's only gonna show and preview me, if I hit animate again, it'll preview it, but only the one that I selected, but since that was a rigid group with the, with the other jaws, uh, the hard jaws, what I can do now, I'm gonna stop it, do now say okay, and now that's all gonna to move together since it's a rigid group that I created. So the thing now is that this is just gonna to move to infinity and beyond, right? as well as move here, but I physically want it to stop at this at the other hard jaws that I have there. So what I'm gonna do is under that slider that it added under joints, open up and hit edit joint, okay? Now what this does is it brings up the minimum and maximum, okay? Now the key thing here is, I'm gonna cancel out of this, I need to know the distance between this face, this hard jaw, and this other jaws right here. So I'm gonna do is just do an inspect, measure between here to here to know that, that is 197.975. So from here now, what we're gonna do is come under, come back over to, sorry, to slider, open that up and edit it, say minimum and a maximum. And if I key in, let's go with negative 197.975, nine seven five okay all this will move in in relationships so if i say okay what's going to happen here is see how this guy it's only moved all the way it, it extended it all the way out that's that's not what i wanted so saying 
start from there and move out. That's not what I want. So what I want to do here in this example is I'm going to make the minimum negative point negative one nine seven point nine seven five. Let's make this zero for the max. Or what rest does is is that it will automatically move it back to the its original position once I move it. So if I say okay, now it's going to be zero and then move all the way out to that distance of 197.975 and now I have my movement for my for my movable jaws. So hopefully this helps you guys out, gives you guys an idea of how to work with imported bodies as well as set up the slider joint for your jaws for machining. Now you can bring this in, apply your stock, put a piece of stock in there, or bring your part in, move over to cam and start machining parts and use the the interference or collision detection inside of the cam simulation side of things. And remember to check out Mike Aubrey's video again to understand a little bit more about that on the top right hand video. If you like this video, hopefully this helped you out, click the thumbs up uh, and feel free to give any feedback you guys want as well as if you're interested in any other tips and tricks, feel free to comment those in the comment section. Thanks again guys.